Shigeru Miyamoto, creator of Super Mario, Legend of Zelda, and so many other heavy hitter first party games from Nintendo, has stated that he thinks of the Super Mario cast as a troupe of actors, that their roles differ from game to game because the stories aren't real even to them. Well, I'm here to call that horse feathers. I say that not only has every game in the entire Super Mario series happened, it's also possible to place it all into a coherent timeline. And why leave it at Mario games, huh? His best friends Yoshi, Wario, Donkey Kong, and all the rest are still around doing their things. We can fit them in here too, somehow. This is the life and times of Super Mario. Baby Mario and Luigi have a little mix-up on their way to being born and wind up on Yoshi's Island. After being taken to their parents, we find out, oops, those were the wrong ones, and go on another adventure. But then, Kamek is kind of pissed that his plans keep being foiled by babies, so he kidnaps all of the babies in the world, and baby Mario, Luigi, Peach, Bowser, Wario, and Donkey Kong the first have to work together with the Yoshis to save them. Baby Mario and Luigi also meet their future selves. Baby Bowser is pissed off at the Yoshis and turns them all into a book. Roughly 18 years later, Mario, straight out of high school, enlists in the United States Army to serve his country with his life. He shipped out to Vietnam at the tail end of the war where he meets the heavy smoker, a man with absolutely no regard for the safety of himself or others. Here Mario takes on his first heroic role, which gave him a taste of the thrill of adventure for years to come. But soon enough, the war is over, and Mario returns home to New Donk City. His brother Luigi gets him a job at a bottling plant with him, which doesn't last long. It's now the 1970s and Mario is bouncing from job to job, nothing really being quite the right fit. Cement factory, boxing referee, construction worker, but Mario's life changes forever when he joins the circus. He's paired up with the popular and iconic ape, the new Donk Kong, Donkey for short. Donkey was initially captured by Stanley the Bugman, an exterminator who found DK terrorizing his garden. He was handed off to the circus, and Mario and DK's act involves playing field hockey and also Mario forcing DK to juggle pineapples while balancing on a barrel as Mario throws flaming torches at him and laughs. Soon enough, Donkey's had enough. He flies into a fit of rage, kidnapping Pauline, Mario's then-girlfriend and future mayor of New Donk, and fleeing to a construction site. Mario is able to rescue her using the skills he's gained from his various jobs, and he quickly locks Donkey up in a cage to prevent any further outbursts. 1981. Donkey's son, DK Jr., sees this and sets out to rescue his imprisoned father, but not on Mario's watch. Mario does his best to prevent this, but Jr. does eventually rescue his father. Together they flee from Mario's reign of terror, but still taking Pauline with them, which is a big no-no. Mario rescues Pauline, and this adventure leads the Kongs to a tropical island paradise that they settle on. This place comes to be known as Donkey Kong Island slash Donkey Kong Country slash Congo Bongo Island. They never really settle on one. Mario, returning to his mundane life in New Donk, partners with his brother Luigi to found Mario Bros. Plumbing, as DK and Junior live their peaceful lives. DK grows old as his son bones down and has a son named Donkey Kong III. The original Donkey Kong names all of the other apes that they formed a sort of found family with after various streets and landmarks of his hometown of New Donk. Over the years, as DK grows old, he starts going by the name Cranky Kong because he is a very cranky Kong. Donkey Kong Jr. meets an untimely end, forcing DK III to take charge as protector of the family much sooner than expected. Meanwhile, Mario has become a sort of legendary figure, a, a new Donk urban legend. They call him the Jumpman. It sort of gets to his head and he starts to think he's tougher than he really is. And soon, Mario and Luigi stumble into a warp pipe in the sewers beneath New Donk that brings them to the Mushroom Kingdom. It's a kingdom in chaos, as they just happen to show up right when Princess Peach Toadstool has been kidnapped by foreign dictator King Bowser Koopa. Mario leaps at the chance to be a hero again and drags a reluctant Luigi along with him. They're able to defeat Bowser, rescue Princess Peach, and bring peace to the Mushroom Kingdom. In her gratitude, Peach bestows upon Mario his very own castle. It's nice for a while, but Mario soon starts to get bored with the piece. He has restless dreams of adventure and even directs and stars in a play about it. So naturally, when he hears word that another princess has been kidnapped, he's the first to jump on a plane to Sarasaland and rescue Princess Daisy from the alien menace to Tonga. Meanwhile, Wario uses this chance to seize Mario's castle. 
Upon Mario's return, he makes quick work of Wario and takes his castle back, but this isn't the last we're going to see of him. Mario, Luigi, and Peach decide to take a vacation in Dinosaur Land, but Peach is quickly kidnapped once again by Bowser. It's here that Mario and Luigi are reunited with their surrogate father, Yoshi. Yoshi helps them rescue the princess, and when they return to the Mushroom Kingdom, Mario and Yoshi do all kinds of father-son things together, like juggling, baking cookies, and shooting things. Bowser's antagonism never ceases, and he tries to incite global warming and kidnaps Mario. Luigi and Yoshi stop him and rescue Mario, but Bowser is not done yet, because he has a time machine and is going to steal historical artifacts. So Mario stops him yet again. Wario's next fiendish plot is to throw a bucket on Mario's head. Mario is helped through this predicament by a fairy named Wanda. Then Wario heads to the woods to hang with his gang, but is stopped by Toad. After all of that, the princess invites Mario and Luigi over for a picnic. Hoping she made lots of spaghetti, Mario and Luigi head over there, only to find a note from Bowser addressed to the pesky plumbers. The Koopa Kids and him have taken over the Mushroom Kingdom, and the princess is now a permanent guest at one of his seven Koopa hotels. He dares them to find her if they can, so they gotta find the princess, and we gotta help them. If you need instructions on how to get through the hotels, check out the enclosed instruction book. Wario also gets in on the scheming action because his next plot is to fight Bomberman. Yeah, that's right, Bomberman. From Bomberman. He's just there. It sort of starts to become clear that Wario isn't actually a bad guy, though. He's a greedy, mischievous asshole, but he's not evil. Yeah, he broke into Mario's house, but mostly just to prove that he could. Other than that, he hasn't really done anything... bad. He just really wants a castle. So he's going to try to buy one with his own money that he gets honestly, by finding it lying around outside, and also by stealing a statue of Princess Peach from Captain Syrup and her brown sugar pirates, which they previously stole. And then Mario steals back. Mario returns to his plumbing roots when he must rid the pipes of the Clash House Tower of Koopas and other bothersome creatures. Wario seeks treasure in the Awazon. In an attempt to rescue Princess Peach, seven star fragments are scattered around the world. Mario must team up with Peach, Bowser, and two new friends, Mallow and Gino, to retrieve them and save the world. And then later has to save Peach and her castle again by jumping into magic paintings. Wario now has a modest castle of his own when Captain Syrup steals all of his treasure and also lets his pet chicken out, and Wario has to right these wrongs. Then ends up in the music box world where he has to kill a giant clown. Then he goes for even more treasure and winds up accidentally rescuing Princess Shokora. Meanwhile, someone has kidnapped Princess Peach's voice. Mario, Luigi, and Bowser go to the nearby Bean Bean Kingdom to retrieve it. Meanwhile, Bowser's minions have their own side adventure where they attempt to rescue Bowser. Luigi wins a spooky old mansion in a contest and beats Professor Elvin Gad, who tells him that he has to go fight ghosts to rescue his brother. Also, Guigi is there. Don't worry about it. After that dark and spooky bone-curdling adventure, Mario and Peach decide to take it easy and live it up on old Dial Delfino. But then Mario gets arrested and jailed for his crimes, namely vandalism. Don't worry though, because it turns out that it was all a big misunderstanding, and it was all Bowser's son, Bowser Jr., playing a prank and trying to make Peach adopt him. Wario is enjoying life in his newly renovated castle when a mysterious black jewel starts to engulf all of his treasure. He must now go on a quest, aided by the Spritelings, to seal it away once again and keep his riches. For years, the Kong family has been living isolated on the island, but they weren't without conflict. Records are spotty, but around 1996, Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong had to fight off King K. Rule and his invading Kremlin force after stealing their banana hoard. Then they had to do it again because Cranky dared them to. A year later, Captain K. Roll returned to kidnap Donkey Kong, so Diddy teams up with his girlfriend Dixie Kong to destroy Crocodile Isle and make it sink into the ocean. And then they do it again! So Baron K. Rulenstein kidnaps Donkey and Diddy the following year, prompting Dixie to team up with her cousin Kitty Kong to rescue them. Then the whole gang enters a contest to find the Lost World, Jurassic Park. An evil pig wizard from space named, get this, Wizpig, shows up, so Diddy Kong has to use race cars and aeroplanes to defeat him, with the help of his best friends Banjo and Conker, as well as some other characters nobody remembers or cares about. King K. Rule is sick and tired of losing to the Kongs, and plans to get revenge on them for destroying his island by destroying their island. So Donkey and Diddy team up with Chunky, Tiny, and Lanky Kong to put a stop to the Kremlin activity once and for all. Until they come back, King K. Roll returns once again to steal all the medals that were set to be used for the Jungle Jam Tournament, a competition for the swingingest Kongs around. 
then later still steals the crystal banana from an alien named Zananab, and the Kongs go on a quest to retrieve it. The Kong family is able to make amends with the Kremlings and to have a friendly rocket barrel race with a few of them. DK later went on a quest to be the very best and defeated some rampaging baddies that were tearing up the jungle. But of course, to be the best, you have to step out of your comfort zone. And it was for this reason that in 2001, Donkey Kong III went on a pilgrimage to the land of his forefathers, New Donk City. At the same time, Mario was unveiling his new toy line, the Mini Marios, capitalizing on his image due to his notability as a great hero. Donkey Kong really wants one, but they're all sold out, so he kidnaps three toads that laughed at him. Mario is able to get his toys back, but he pities the grandson of his old foe and gives him one anyway. Mario and Peach try a ride that turns them into orbs, but Bowser kidnaps Peach, so Mario uses the power of Pinball to save her. Bowser attacks Yoshi's Island, and Yoshi must work together with several spirits and the power of gravity to stop him. Mario, Luigi, and a bunch of toads get kidnapped, which means Princess Peach has to rescue them herself, with nothing but a sentient umbrella and the power of feelings. Remember when baby Mario and Luigi met their future selves back in the 50s? This is when they go back in time. Bowser Jr. kidnaps Peach, and then his father Bowser falls into lava and all of his flesh gets burned off. It's fine, he's fine though. His flesh even goes back after a while. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about it. Mario and Luigi then go on a coin hunt to holla holla get Dala, and end up having to rescue Peach again. Mario returns to his successful toy company and reunites with his lost love, Pauline. DK is also interested in Pauline, and upon being rejected, kidnaps her. Mario has to save her yet again. Wario builds a device that lets him go into a TV show to steal the treasure from it. Bowser fours Mario and Luigi! While dealing with that debacle, Bowser Jr. temporarily takes over the throne. Mario opens up a theme park, and Donkey Kong really wants the limited edition Pauline toy he's giving out. He flies into a fit of rage when he can't get one and kidnaps Pauline. Again. During the Star Festival, Bowser decides he wants to make his own galaxy, so he kidnaps Peach. Mario must team up with the mysterious space goddess Rosalina to rescue her, and remake the galaxy in his image. And then do it all again! After years of training with his mentor Doc Lewis, Little Mac is once again ready to take on the ring in the greatest boxing challenge of all time. Donkey Kong also decides to enter for funsies. Peach briefly considered entering too, but ultimately decided against it. Captain Syrup discovers the Shake Dimension while stealing artifacts from a museum, and so tricks Wario into saving them from the Shake King so she can steal its treasure for herself. Following this adventure, Wario decides to settle down in Diamond City and open up his own video game company with all of his best friends, Jimmy T, Mona Pizza, Ashley, and so many others. They make so many revolutionary gaming concepts for handhelds and consoles alike, including gyro, touch, motion, and photo technology. Then on Peach's 47th birthday, she's kidnapped by Bowser Jr. and the Koopalings. Donkey Kong and Pauline finally set aside their differences and work together to run a carnival. But then DK kidnaps Pauline yet again, but it's okay because this time it's all a trick to lure Mario to a surprise party. Following that, Donkey Kong's adventures in the big city have come to an end. He returns to Donkey Kong Country, and just in time too, since the Tiki Tak tribe has emerged from the volcano and hypnotized all of the local wildlife. Except Donkey Kong, he's too dumb. He and Diddy Kong work together to defeat the Tikis and even knock the moon out of orbit and crash it into the Earth. Yeah, that stops the Tikis alright! Bowser removes all the leaves from the Tanuki tree and then has his flesh burned off again. And then he seizes Peach's castle to hold Peach hostage inside. After rescuing her, Mario is nowhere to be found, so Luigi has a fun time running around with his new best friend Nabbit. Professor E. Gad contacts Luigi once again to send him to collect the pieces of the Dark Moon and bust some ghosts from various haunted mansions. During this time, Egad also accidentally creates Guigi, who he sends back in time to aid Luigi on his first ghost-busting adventure. Also, Luigi adopts the Polter Pup, who's a very good boy. Wario thinks he can make bank making games for the Wii U, but tragically, not even Wario can make money on that thing. 
the gang goes to Pielo Island, and Bowser makes a friend, an evil friend, and also Luigi falls asleep and Mario and Luigi go into his mind, starring Dreamy Luigi and Dreamy Bowser as if their original counterparts weren't already. Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad have to rescue the Sprixies from Meowser, Bowser's fursona. Meanwhile, Captain Toad and Toadette have to take turns rescuing each other from a giant bird. Donkey Kong and friends fight off the invading Snowmads on his 17th birthday and keep their tropical paradise tropical. Luigi opens up a book containing the Paper Mario world and all of the Paper friends come out of there. Mario and Luigi must team up with Paper Mario to put those things back where they came from. Bowser destroys Peach's castle and kidnaps her, so Super Mario runs to save her. To rebuild the castle, Mario uses his construction knowledge and collects a lot of money. Wario hosts an esports competition and a small child is out to get him. In a completely different reality, a genius girl has created the Super Merge headset that can combine things so that they can be two things. The rabbits show up and ruin it all and combine themselves with Super Mario to send them to the Mushroom Kingdom. Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Yoshi must team up with their rabid doppelgangers to set things right. Also, Rabbit Peach has a fun side adventure where she meets Donkey Kong and a cranky rabbit. Bowser kidnaps Peach and plans the perfect, most elaborate and romantic wedding, sending him around the world to collect things for it, and Mario around the world to chase him down. Pauline has been elected mayor of New Donk City by the time Mario returns. This culminates in a showdown on the moon. Peach leaves Mario and Bowser alone on the moon to work through their differences, and they realize they weren't so different after all. Luigi wins a contest for a trip to a luxury hotel and brings all of his friends, but it turns out the whole thing was a trap laid by Helen gravely, all because she wants to bone down with King Boo. Luigi breaks out the poltergust and busts ghosts floor after floor. Also, Luigi is there. Don't worry about it. Which brings us to the final era, the modern day from about 2006 to present. Mario, Bowser, and all of their friends, enemies, and frenemies have squashed their respective beeves and begun to hang out as buddies. Go-karts, sports games, board game nights, they just like to have fun. While Luigi shows up out of nowhere, and while he and Wario do engage in mischief from time to time, it's never anything worse than cheating. EGAT's time machine is used to bring the baby versions of Mario, Luigi, Peach, Daisy, Donkey Kong, and Rosalina, as well as the deceased Donkey Kong Jr forward in time so that they can go karting and play tennis as well. The whole gang trains and becomes Olympic athletes starting with Beijing in 2008 and continuing at least through Tokyo 2020, despite being literally in their 50s to 60s. They're kind of the only athletes the Mushroom Kingdom has to offer though. Mario also goes to medical school and brings his practice to the Mushroom Kingdom, with Peach acting as his nurse. At one point, Matt Sciencestein steals his megavitamins, though Dr. Mario blames Wario for it. They work it out and take down Mad Science Team together. As time goes on, Mario passes on his knowledge to Luigi, and eventually, when a massive viral outbreak happens, nearly every notable inhabitant of the Mushroom Kingdom is granted a medical license. As of 2020, Mario, Luigi, Peach, Bowser, and Wario are all 64 years old and still kicking. Cranky Kong has not been seen in public since 2003 at the age of 47, and given the lifespan of a gorilla, we can only assume the worst. May he rest in peace.